by the end of this project, I'm gonna control that garage door with this phone. And this Pico W is how I'm gonna do it. Why? Because garage door remotes are clunky and expensive. And this is pretty cool. Here's how it's gonna work. I'll set the Pico W up to host a simple web page with buttons for the door controls. Up, stop, and down. When I press one of those buttons on my phone, the Pico W will tell the garage door motor what to do. But how does the Pico tell the garage door motor what to do? My model of garage door motor has an accessory terminal. Look, there's a connection for up, stop, and down. I expect these are meant to be hardwired to some kind of like custom button panel that mounts to the wall. For example, on that imaginary switch plate, when you push the up button, it connects the up terminal to the ground terminal. And I can simulate that by bridging the terminals with these side cutters. Look at that. And of course the same thing happens when you bridge the down terminal to ground, the door goes down. Side note, you really don't want to be sticking tools or bits of yourself into powered equipment unless you really know what you're doing. So for the Pico W to tell the motor what to do, we need to make a circuit for the Pico W that looks like a switch. And for that we'll use some transistors. Like a button switch that makes a connection between these two pins when I press my finger on the button, these transistors close the connection between the so-called drain and source pins when the Pico W pushes on the gate pin with a high voltage from one of its GPIO. All right, it's time to get building. I'll use one of these Makerverse proto boards since it has a footprint that accepts a Pico and conveniently labels all the pins. Starting with the transistor output circuit, I've chosen these 2N7000 N-channel MOSFETs. Splay the leads and solder them to the board. Connect all the source pins to the common rail. You can see the silk screen marking that rail in one line. The common rail is unconnected by default and can be connected to ground by closing one of these jumpers. Next, a resistor is connected between each transistor gate and ground. These pull down resistors stabilize the gate voltage should the Pico ever become disconnected. If they weren't here, the gates would be floating and that could mean spurious triggering of the door motor. Now it's time to solder the screw terminals. A 5 way terminal is soldered near the transistors and tracks are formed with solder bridges to connect each drain pin to a terminal. I thought all this bubbling and popping was the excess flux coming out of the solder, but it turns out I was just boiling the blue tack that I was using to hold the terminal in place. Oops. The remaining two terminals are for the power connection. Luckily, my garage door motor also provides 12 volt DC power, and I'll use a switch mode DC to DC converter to reduce that to five volts, which is compatible with the Pico W. The converter is soldered into place with the input and shutdown pins connected together to ensure stable operation. A shocky diode goes from the output to the V-Sys pin on the Pico. This is the preferred way to inject external power. The diode means we can still connect to the Pico via USB, even while it's receiving external power. Next, solder tracks are made from the input and ground pins to the remaining terminals. The ground is also connected with the common ground rail we saw earlier, and here I reused a cutoff lead from the diode. The output circuit and power supply are complete, and it's time to mount the Pico W. I could solder the Pico directly to the proto board. It has like castellated pads, so it can be mounted directly, but to be safe, I'll make it removable by using these 20 pin male female headers.
I almost forgot, but you do actually have to connect the transistor gates to a control signal. And for these, I picked GPIO 17, 18, and 20. Time for a smoke test. I programmed the onboard LED to blink continuously and connected the circuit to a lab supply with current limiting. As I dialed up the current, the circuit kicked in, and since the LED continues to flash, we know that the Pico is running the code that's on it, and the circuit is sitting happy at about a quarter watt. Next, I tested the output circuit. A test group activates each transistor in sequence one by one, and using the continuity function of a multimeter, I can probe each channel to see if it gets pulled to ground when it ought to. And importantly, there's no shorts between channels either. With the hardware proven, it's time to set up the firmware. The code is adapted from another tutorial where we create a web server to control an LED. Of course, links in the project write-up. Here's how the firmware works. We power up the circuit, it connects to Wi-Fi, and gives us its local IP address. We navigate to that IP address and get served a web page, which was defined as a bunch of HTML in MicroPython code. When we click on a button, it sets that command in the address. Our code is looking for these commands in the serve client function. You can see door equals up, door equals down, door equals stop. If it finds one, it calls the control door function. And the control door function checks the command, for example, up, down, stop, and sets the appropriate pin high. That turns on the transistor, which pulls the terminal low and drives the door. It also blinks the LED briefly and then sets the control pin low again. And just like that, we're ready to install. Depower the door motor and use some multi-core cable to connect our circuit to the accessory port. We've got 12 volt, ground, and three control channels, five wires. Got my helper. Hey, Winston. You helping? Yeah, yeah. Ooh. And now for the moment of truth. I navigate to the IP address of the Pico with my phone. The web page loads up and the buttons work exactly as expected. Yeah. And stop, door up, stop, door down. I'm so pleased with how this project feels. It feels completely instant when I touch that button on my phone. It's actually more responsive than my real physical garage door remotes, which often have like a, a gummy un unresponsive button. That's a perfectly functional garage door controller that you can access from your phone. There's a few nice extras that you could do, like assign a static IP address to the Pico W so it, its address doesn't change on you and you lose it within your network or can't remember the IP address. Since I run a Pi hole, which is like a Raspberry Pi based DNS server, I actually redirect all traffic for the domain garage.door to the IP address of my Pico. So I can open up my phone and just go to garage.door and save that as a bookmark. I think that's a cute touch. It's currently the next day from filming, so excuse the rain. There's just something that I've got to get off my chest though. There are a few things that you should consider before attempting this project. The first is safety. Garage doors are machines that move up and down. Now they have their own force sensitive safety mechanisms that are designed by professionals. So I consider this to be relatively safe. If the Pico W triggers the door to move at some random time, I feel like that's probably equivalent to if you had the garage door remote in your pocket and you just butt dialed the garage door and made it move. The second is security. You are essentially giving everyone on your Wi-Fi network physical access to your garage or house. And the last is you could potentially damage your garage door motor or controller. You know, this is a pretty low cost project, but it could very quickly get very expensive if you damage or break your garage door motor for whatever reason. My garage door motor works in the way that we've seen in this video, but yours very well could be different. So be aware of that. Consider your personal knowledge, electronics and project skills and appetite for risk. I would only proceed if you have at least two of those three.
If you'd like to follow along, of course, the schematic, code, bill of materials, it's all listed up in the article write up. Be sure to check out the precursor tutorial to this project, also linked in the write up. In that, we cover how to set up a web server that controls an LED, and we look at the web server code in a bit more depth. Until next time, happy making.